Welcome back. If you're a hand loader, you've no doubt questioned whether you should be crimping your bullets in place or not. Well, there are times that you should be and there are times that you don't need to, and we'll talk about all those circumstances. The question is actually suggested by the industry practice of crimping factory ammunition. Most factory ammunition that you'll buy off the shelf, and I say most, is going to employ a crimp around this bullet. And um, so that, that oftentimes uh, gives a suggestion to many people that is something that you have to do with your own ammunition in order to provide the same excellent quality uh, in your own homegrown uh, product. Well, anyway, what is a crimp and what does it do? Well, the crimp's only purpose at all is to resist the movement of the bullet within the case. In other words, shifting of the bullet usually downward into the case uh, due to the forces generated by uh, rapid action cycling, say in an auto-loading firearm, or in uh, the case of a uh, magazine-fed firearm also, where the uh, recoil forces are so high that it could possibly jolt those bullets out of place. So that's the only reason why a crimp is employed. It's not there for the purpose of waterproofing. Um, the, the, actual, the actual dry contact of two metal surfaces, the, the brass case and the, uh, the, the copper uh, jacketed bullet, that's a, that's a dry seal, which is every bit as effective as a flared fitting that a plumber will employ with high pressure water lines. So you don't have to worry about the fact that uh, it's, it's not there for the purpose of waterproofing. Um, it's only there to resist inertial forces, that's all. Now, I can tell you that in almost 55 years of hand loading, and I've been loading for all manner of cartridges, um, when it comes to rifles, rifle cartridges, and I'll talk about handgun cartridges separately altogether, but when it comes to rifle cartridges, there's never been an instance where I've had any bullet shift in a case, even in, even in situations such as my 300 Winchester Magnum when I was shooting 200 grain uh, nozzle petition bullets in the magazine. I would, during, during testing and evaluation of the loads, I would f fill up that magazine and then fire a shot and then examine the length of the cartridges in that magazine progressively and see if there was any shortening of those uh, rounds or lengthening. And I never found any whatsoever. You know, using my calipers, I could never find a situation where those bullets were shifting. Uh, and that's a relatively short neck. 300 Winchester Magnum does not have a very, very long neck. So nothing as long as, for instance, a 3006. So if that was the situation with a 300 Winchester Magnum, it's probably going to hold true for most cartridges of lesser uh, power and lesser recoil. And that was a heavy bullet. 200 grain bullet is a, is a very heavy bullet. Um, there are certainly cartridges which I would always uh, employ a, a crimp, and I'll give you a classic example. Would be your, you know, your African cartridges. Here's uh, your, your dangerous game cartridges. Here's here's a um, 416 Remington, and this has a very very pronounced heavy rolled crimp right into that deep cantilever. So that's not going to be that's not going to be shifting. And, you know, the, the actual tension of the crimp is not what's holding the bullet in place. It's the shelf that's created uh, above the crimp that the bullet basically cannot drive backwards. It can come forward quite easily because it's just releasing its grasp as it comes out. But as, it's, as the bullet is being pressed down, that crimp actually is holding it in place, much like a, much like a uh, arrow can only go in one direction in... Uh, a target. And here's also a uh, 458 Winchester Magnum. Very, very solid deep crimp around that 500 grain bullet. And you can see that 500 grain bullet goes all the way down to here. It's a, that's a huge bullet. You can see the shadow of that if you look very carefully. So anyway, those are, those are circumstances where I would always crimp uh, my hand loads. Um, the practice seems to have uh, changed somewhat uh, through the years. I'll give, you, I'll give you another example where a crimp should always be employed, and that would be in tubular-fed magazines. This is a 32 Winchester special hand load that I made, and you can see I put a, I hope that's focusing, I put a very good solid crimp around that, and I'll talk about how I did that, 
but I put a good solid crimp around that bullet to prevent it from shifting because in a tubular fed magazine, you have several other rounds in that, in that same magazine forcing against one another. And that's a classic example where bullets could shift if they were not uh, crimped in place. But for all other cartridges, I, I have really avoided crimping through the years. Um, well, I should say also the 223, I do, I do resort to a very, very small amount of crimp. Uh, here's a, here's a uh, factory loaded round, and this is the sort of crimp that I'll put. It's a, it's, a, it's a relatively mild crimp. It's not a very heavy crimp. There's still, you, can actually feel the, you can actually feel the case mouth there. So it's not, it's not deeply embossed around that bullet. But those are circumstances where a, a crimp is certainly to be uh, recommended. And the reason for that is because that could be in a 30 round magazine. And by the time that the last few rounds go up from the bottom of that magazine, there could be some slight shifting if it, was, uh, if, if, if it wasn't crimped. Now, having said all that, um, it seems like the industry is slacking off a little bit on the practice of crimping. I've, I've looked at ammunition that I've purchased recently, uh, thanks to my Patreon patrons, uh, and I've noticed that the, the crimps that used to be employed, which were quite, quite deep, uh, in, most, in most ammunition now, in 270 ammunition, 308 ammunition, uh, there's, there's hardly any crimp whatsoever. It's a very mild crimp. And I think that that owes to the fact that uh, I'll give an example of uh, I'll give an example of two situations with the same cartridge. The same. These are both 308 cartridges. This one here happens to be. This is a, a federal. This is a federal premium uh, match round. In other words, this is a gold medal match round. And this one here has absolutely no crimp on it whatsoever. Now this, this ammunition is designed to be fed through uh, magazine-fed firearms such as a uh, M1A or M14 uh, in match competition, and they're certainly not concerned about whether or not that bullet's going to shift in place. That's a hundred and that's a hundred and sixty. I think that's a no, that's a hundred and seventy-five grain bullet in that one, but they're not concerned about the shifting potential of that bullet. So that would. That would explain why this Winchester cartridge right here, uh, this is a hunting round. This one here has a, a relatively mild crimp. I can still feel very much, I can still feel the case mouth sharp edge right there. So that's a very mild crimp. They did not turn that inward like they used to do. So the industry is backing off, I would say, from that practice. See if I can find another example, and here it is here. Here's a, here's a Winchester load with a 270 bullet, and I can find no crimp whatsoever. That, that's, that case looks as if it has never received any kind of a crimp at all. So there's, there's, uh, there's an example of how uh, crimps seem to be lessening in the industry. I don't think that I've ever experienced a misfeed because, of case, uh, because a case was not crimped. Uh, usually the actions are made in such a way that th that, part of the, that part of the round does not encounter any part of uh, the firearm. So that's probably a, a relatively uh, non-issue. Um, but it can be done for somebody who wants to have that, you know, just to have that uh, more smooth appearance or whatever. Um, can it affect the accuracy negatively? Well, it's possible because as I look at all your, you know, your Lapua and your federal match ammunition uh, that's, that's made for competition use, they do not crimp. So I would say that the conclusion that they've reached is that there's a potential for uh, loss of accuracy with a crimped case. One of the, uh, also one of the disadvantages of crimping a case is that you're affecting basically a, a extra movement on that brass. In other words, you're forcing that brass at the end of the case to be formed against the bullet, and that that additional movement on the brass causes work hardening of the brass. And therefore, that's a that's another that's another reason to uh, not crimp is because crimping crimping each time without without the without the benefit of annealing a case to re-soften it uh, at the neck. 
that can lead to a case failure at the mouth. In other words, case splitting. Because you're, every time, like I say, every single time you work the brass to any degree, you're causing that brass to harden. And when you certainly when you when you're pressing it and ironing it around a bullet, that will work harden it a lot quicker than it would be if you didn't uh, do that at all. So that's that's it. I think when it comes to uh, rifle cartridges, it's strictly it's strictly a matter of personal preference. It's it's nothing that has to be done except in the case of uh, very heavy, uh, like I say, very very heavy, powerful uh, ammunition, even 45 70s, something like that. We we're talking about a combination of uh, extreme recoil and also very heavy bullets. Anything where you have that combination of uh, effort working against that bullet seating. And uh, any, any rounds that are going to be placed in a tubular fed magazine, I would certainly employ a crimp in all cases. So how should a crimp be employed? Well, a crimp should always be employed either into a preformed cantilever. You'll see there's, a, there's that band around that bullet right there. And it, the crimp has to either be placed into a cantilever with a standard seating die. And a standard seating die is like the interior of your chamber. It has, it has a, a, a place where the uh, case mouth encounters a shelf and the case can't go any, it can't go any place except inward. Uh, there's a tapered way where the, the case is forced into the cantilever. You have to have a cantilever in order to do that because without a cantilever, that, that, that case is being forced against the bullet and has no place to go and it starts to buckle and it can actually start bending that, uh, basically buckling the case downward uh, into the shoulder because it's, it's simply not, it's simply not going to uh, be placed into that copper, uh, that copper uh, jacket. Uh, there, is a, there is a way around that, however. Anybody who wishes to crimp uh, into bullets where there is no where there is no cantilever, or if they wish to position uh, their their crimp in a place other than say where Hornady decides to place it, they want to have a little bit longer overall length, and they don't want to have that cantilever uh, judge where that overall length is going to be. They can employ a Lee factory crimp die now. This is not a die which is actually used by factories, but this employs a crimp which you can see there are there are four segments in that there are four segments in that uh, interior, and that is a collet which, when driven up, this is actually a two-part die. When that collet is driven up and forced up by the shell holder, it causes those four petals to close around that case. That will actually emboss a that will emboss a crimp into a bullet which does not does, does, that does not have a cantilever. That's the only way that you can do that. You can't do it with a standard seating die, uh, which which attempts to uh, crush a, a case into a into a, a bullet where there is no cantilever. So that's the remedy for that. And to my mind, even when I do decide to crimp. Uh, such as with a uh, with my 32 Winchester Special, I, or even with my 223 MO, I always employ the Lee system because the Lee system puts the factory style crimp into that case, rather than rather than stuffing the end of the case around uh, around that uh, tapered shelf in the inside the die. It's actually squeezing and embossing straight around that case. Lee uses collets very effectively also in their uh, resizing dies, their, their, neck, their neck sizing dies, where the collet does the same thing around the case mouth, uh, around the case neck, uh, and, and presses it down upon a, a mandrel, which is one thousandth of an inch smaller than a bullet. So that's the story of crimping with uh, rifle cases. Well, let's talk about the imperative of crimping handgun bullets. Here's a 44 Magnum bullet, and this has got a deep, this is my own hand load, and this has got a very deep crimp around the cantilever that's provided by the manufacturer. And all, all 
bullets which are manufactured for the use of uh, in revolver cartridges will have that will have that cantaloupe because the manufacturer knows that you have to have a provision for crimping. Uh, there's no question about it when it comes to revolver or pistol cartridges. One of the one of the nicest benefits of crimping a say a, a revolver cartridge like this is that it just slides into the cylinder without catching at the edge. And especially if you're using a speed loader, all, all six or seven rounds, whatever it is, will just glide right in without hanging up. So it's, it's, that's a handy reason why it should be crimped to begin with. Secondly, and most important, is again, the inertial forces generated by the recoil. A 44 Magnum uh, can very, very easily, during, during, the, during the jolting recoil, or a 357 Magnum, or a 41 Magnum, or a Casul, whatever you happen to have, those, those handguns can very easily generate the recoil that will uh, shift those bullets in place. Now let's talk about what happens when that occurs. If you have a, if you have a 44 Magnum case, that 44, that 44 Magnum load was designed for the internal dimension of that case. If that bullet shifts downward by even a tenth of an inch, basically you've, you've essentially created a 44 Special. And, but with a 44 Magnum load. And you can see where the potential for extremely hazardous pressures will climb very quickly. And it's, it's very possible for, once a bullet loses contact with that case and starts to drift on, say, the, if, if you've got a six shooter and you, 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 your fourth round has drifted down a little bit and the pressures have gone up, your fifth round has gone even deeper, and by the time you get to your sixth round, that, you may not know it, but that, that bullet may have actually disappeared down inside the case, and you have now uh, less dimension inside than you might have with a 38 Special, but you've got a 44 Magnum load in there. So, because powder density does not always fill a case to the top, that's the ideal, uh, but you know, people, people like to be economical, so they buy powders which are less dense, and so therefore the powder can be uh, only filling the case maybe a third or halfway. That gives that bullet nearly an entire uh, bullet diameter to drop down into the case. That's a very, very dangerous situation, and so you should always crimp all handgun loads. And that, that also goes for even 38 special loads. 38 special loads, uh, it's also the same thing. By, by, this, is a, this is a factory, federal factory loaded 38 special, and that's got a very, very deep uh, crimp on it, and that crimp also will very easily drop into a cylinder. So that's a very good reason to always crimp your, your revolver loads, even if there's no likely potential of drifting down into the case. When it comes to uh, pistol loads, uh, auto-loading cartridges, those are always crimped. You're not given the option when you're loading those. Um, the last die that you the last die that you employ irons that case out around that bullet and it creates basically what's called a taper crimp. Now Lee goes one step farther and I'm not promoting Lee. I, I just I just love the some of the the uh, things that they've come up with uh, that's outside the box. Uh, that's you know sometimes sometimes you have to think outside the box. But this is a hand load here where uh, I used a Lee uh, post crimping die, and that what that does is it's a it, it's a die. The last die it's a factory crimp die, but it really does not crimp the case because, as you know, uh, auto loading pistols like 45s and 40 Smith and Wessons, nine millimeter Luger, 380s, they all head space on the mouth of the case, so that case that case mouth has to always be present to. Uh, be received by the chamber. Otherwise, that, that case will just keep on going in. So that's where it's head spaces. So the type of crimp which is used basically irons that brass all the way down from top to bottom, all the way down to the uh, base of the case. And that, that lead die does what's it's a very aggressive uh, post sizing using a carbide die, and it reforms that case to exactly uh, factory specifications, it's the same as you bought it. Uh, from from the uh, box, so that's a very effective die. But you don't you don't get an option uh, with with auto loading pistol cartridges. The the crimp the crimp is employed 
just because it's there. It's, there's nothing you can do about it, so that's not even a question. So that's about, I think, all I have to say about whether you should crimp or not. How to crimp is also a question that I have received. Uh, the crimp should be, here's a, here's a um, hand-loaded bullet of mine, uh, I should say a hand-cast uh, bullet, and the crimp should always be placed in, basically there's a groove specifically uh, made uh, that's different than the other grooves. The other grooves are what you call, dry, these are for the, to create the driving bands and to receive uh, lubrication, but that forward-most groove that forward-most groove right there, that is where you should place the crimp. And the crimp should always be put into, into the, basically the middle of the uh, groove. So you, where, the deepest, where the deepest part of that groove exists is where that, that crimp should be placed, whether it's into a cantilever or into uh, you know, a, a groove such as that on a hand-cast bullet. So I think that's all there is. I want to tell you a little bit of a funny story I happened to come across this, I happened to come across this um, 222 cartridge uh, when I was going through some of my things uh, a couple of hours ago, and uh, you'll notice it, it, looks, it looks like it's perhaps uh, nickel plated. Well, that's not. It's actually, it's actually silver plated. So I'm going to make a confession. Uh, back in 1968, I took, uh, I took the liberty of uh, silver plating this when I was an electroplater. Uh, it's, it's, uh, I had a few of these cases that I silver plated, and I had them strung on a wire and uh, hung on the hook in the uh, silver plating tank. And um, the only time I ever saw the owner of the company, ever saw him on the floor of the factory, he happened to walk in just as I was doing that. <laughs> and. Uh, this company is now defunct. In fact, the, the, building, where, the building where that uh, company existed is now an uh, EPA super site because so much, so much stuff was put down the dry, the dry wells into the earth. Uh, you know, the, the land glows around there. Uh, we put awful stuff down there. That was back in the, like I say, back in the 60s and early 70s. But anyway, I, I had strung a bunch of these cartridge cases on uh, copper wire and uh, I had it just hanging on the tank, and it was going back and forth on the oscillating rod, and um, this big, big one-inch diameter uh, copper, copper rod, and it was going back and forth in the tank all by itself. And uh, the owner of the company came down with his uh, tie on and his, uh, his suit, and he has several people with him. And uh, I didn't know it at the time, but he was, he was showing off the company to a bunch of buyers that, from uh, ITT that were going to be buying the company. And um, so he, he looks at me, he says, son, he says, uh, can we see what you got in the tank there? And I said, sir, I said, it, you know what happens if you, if you remove that? I said, it's going to double plate and those pots are going to blister. He said, what, what, what is it? And I said, well, it's a hot job for Western Electric. <laughs> I was lying through my teeth. But anyway, I got away with it, and I, I think I, I think I uh, sweated two pounds of uh, weight off of me that moment. But um, I, I surely would have been, I surely would have been canned if he had ever discovered that I was plating my plating my uh, ammo cases. So anyway, but that's it. That's that's the case of the uh, silver bullet. So there you have it. Benny was down here just a little while ago, and. Uh, He's enjoying himself upstairs right now, probably uh, outdoors or something running around. So anyway, thanks for watching, and for all my Patreon subscribers and, and donors, uh, I really appreciate your assistance. You, you've been uh, very helpful to me so that I can keep my videos going. So thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe right now. Hit that, hit that uh, bell, too, and make sure that uh, you know when I'm going to be posting a new video. Thanks for watching. God bless.